the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone, welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We've made it all the way down to section 9 and in this section we're going to be tying up some loose ends and delving into some of the additional functions available in Excel if you're a business analyst. And in this first module we're going to take a look at conditional formatting. Now conditional formatting is a great way to really highlight certain values in your spreadsheet and you highlight them based on conditions that you've set. Now there's lots of different types of conditional formatting that you can apply to your spreadsheets and if you're looking for the button you will find it on the home ribbon. In the styles group you have a conditional formatting drop down just here and you can see all of the different types of conditional formatting you can apply. The top two here allow you to specify criteria in order to highlight certain values in your spreadsheet. And the ones below the line, these bottom three, data bars, color scales, and icon sets, are a really visual way of highlighting data in your spreadsheets. They help you tell the story in an engaging way. And I'm going to show you an example of all of these in this module. So we're actually going to apply our conditional formatting to our pivot table. So this is the data that we've been working with throughout the pivot table section of this course. And you can see the way that I've got this pivot table arranged. I have the ship date up in filters. I have the region followed by the country in my rows. And then I have three columns showing me the total profit in dollars, the total costs, and also the average profit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply conditional formatting to highlight certain values based on criteria that I set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in this total profits column. I'm going to go up to conditional formatting and let's look at highlight cells rules first of all. Now what this allows you to do is highlight the cell based on whether it's greater than a number that you specify, less than, between two numbers, or possibly even equal to a specific number. So I'm going to say highlight cells that are greater than and then I can specify the value. So I'm going to say highlight cells that are greater than 25 million. And I can also specify what color I want to use to highlight those cells. So we have a few options in here or you can choose your own custom format. Now for this example I am happy to keep it on light red fill with dark red text and I'm going to click on OK. Now because I was just clicked on one cell when I applied the conditional formatting, in order to get that to copy all the way down this column, I need to click this little formatting options box and select the bottom option, all cells showing total profit values for country. And there we go. So now I can see that wherever it finds a value in that particular column that's over 25 million, it's highlighted it in red for me. So fairly straightforward. Let's go up to conditional formatting again, highlight cells rules. And this time I'm going to say highlight all cells that are less than, and we'll say 20 million. And this time I'm going to do this with a yellow fill click on OK, click my formatting options and apply it to all cells showing total profit values for country. And there we go. And I could carry on going applying conditional formatting to really highlight the information that I want to see. Now it's worth noting that once you've set up conditional formatting, essentially what you've set up is a rule. So if I jump back into conditional formatting and go all the way down to manage rules, that's going to show me the conditional formatting that I've set up. So if I want to delete these out, I can simply do it from here. I can select the rule and click delete rule. Similarly, if I want to edit a rule and make any changes, I have an edit rule button in here, which will allow me to modify that. Click on OK and click on OK again. So now let's jump back up to conditional formatting and look at top bottom rules. So with this one, Excel essentially looks at your data and it will work out or give you the top 10 items, the top 10%, the bottom 10, the bottom 10%, everything that's above average or below average. 
So if I wanted to see the top 10% countries by the column that I'm clicked in, which is the total profit, I can say top 10%. And I could change the percentage here if I wanted to. And I could choose to highlight that with green fill, click on OK, and once again, I'm going to copy that down. So now all that's highlighted are the top 10% of items in my data by total profit. Now you'll notice here that when I'm doing these rules, it's just highlighting the cell of the column that I'm clicked in. And I always get a lot of questions saying, well, how do you get it to highlight the whole row? So let me show you a quick trick on how you can do that. I'm going to first jump in and just manage the rules and delete this piece of conditional formatting. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rule that says anything that's greater than 25 million in total profits, highlight the entire row and not just the cell. So let me show you how to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my data, control shift down. And then I'm going to create myself a new rule. And I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And I'm going to say equals if cell B5 is greater than 25 million, then I want you to apply a green format to the entire row. Now the reason why this will work is because you can see there we've just locked the column, the column B. So it's only going to look down column B to determine which values are greater than 25 million. But because the row isn't locked, then the formatting can apply across the entire row. So let's click on OK and click away and we should see our results there. So now everything that is over 25 million has been highlighted in green. Let's move on now to looking at some of the more visual conditional formats that you can apply. So these three options below the line, data bars, color scales, and icon sets, these really add a nice visual element to your spreadsheets. So for example, if I was to utilize data bars and I have the option of gradient fill or solid fill, if I just select the top one here, and again, I'm gonna apply that to all, it's going to give me a visual representation in the form of a bar as to what the value is in that particular cell in relation to the other cells. And if you wanted to, if you thought this looked a little bit crowded, you could actually choose to display the bar only. Now you might think to yourself, well, why would that be useful? Wouldn't I want to see the value? Well, if you can imagine a scenario, maybe you work in HR and you're doing a presentation that shows people's salaries, maybe you want to keep those confidential, but you want people to have a general idea of where the salary falls against other salaries. So in that scenario, it's a good idea to remove the value and just have the data bar. So all you need to do is jump up to conditional formatting, go down to manage rules and edit the rule. And you'll see there's an option there in the middle for show bar only. Click on OK. And now we just have that bar. The next piece of conditional formatting you might want to apply are color scales. So the way that these work is that they look at your data and then they apply a graded cell color. So for example, this top option just here where it says green, yellow, red color scale, it applies a color gradient to a range of cells. The color indicates where each cell value falls within that range. Now, because this one is green, yellow, red, it means the higher the value, the closer to green it is, the lower the value, the closer to red. And you have numerous different options in here. So let's select this one here, red, yellow, green color scale. You also do have two color scales down here if you just want green fading into white, but I'm gonna do three. And again, I'm going to apply that to all cells. So with this color scale I selected, the closer to red, the higher the number. So if I scroll down, I can see that yes, I have a red cell just there and that is a high number. So it gives you an idea of where that value falls within a range. And finally, we have icon sets. So again, these are used as a visual representation of the value in the cell. And you have three icon icon sets and also four and five icon icon sets. So it really depends how you want to split up this data. 
So for example, if I was to select this traffic light system, you can see here that there are three icons. It's a three icon icon set. So the way that this works is Excel looks at your data and it essentially splits it into thirds because there are three icons and it assigns an icon depending on where in that range the value falls. So if the value in the cell is in the bottom third, it's going to be red. If it's in the middle third, yellow. And if it's in the top third, it's going to be green. So let's apply this traffic light system. And there we go. You can see how that has applied. Now again with these, if you don't like the way that Excel splits up your data into thirds, if you want to split it up a slightly different way, then once again you can go in and you can edit your rule for your icon sets and you can define how you want these traffic lights to assign. So you could say when value is greater than or equal to and then define your own number because currently Excel is just splitting it into thirds. So conditional formatting is a great way of analyzing data by highlighting the information that's most important to you. And with these additional visual conditional formats, it makes your spreadsheet a bit more engaging, easier and more interesting for people to read and understand. That's it for this module. In the next module, we're going to be taking a look at the indirect function. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.